Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Weapon Switches, welcome to the channel and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my own thoughts about Switchscape. Now, I understand that Switchscape can be kind of a heated topic. You look at any places on Twitter or on Reddit, and a mere mention of the term makes it seem like someone is going to just fall off the end of the earth. So I will ask in advance to keep it civil in the comments, as this is just a discussion video on my thoughts on the topic. So I think the best place to start off is with the question, what is Switchscape? The simple definition to that is using one or more items to gain an advantage in a combat scenario. For example, in the basic rotation of melee, you have decimate, cleave, and then two basics, and then the cycle repeats itself. Now, one set of weapons can't do this rotation because decimate is a dual-wield ability, and cleave is a two-hand ability. So, you switch between the two weapons in order to get the most damage possible out of the basic abilities available to melee. Now, usually when people discuss this, there are two sides that people typically will fall into. One of those is, I don't want to do switches, and I shouldn't have to do switches. And the other side usually cites skill expression or something like that to show that you should have to put in the work to get more damage. So we'll break down these two arguments into a bit of more detail and see what's really going on under the hood. So taking a look at the first argument of I shouldn't have to swap a bunch of weapons around and juggle them like a performer in a circus show in order to get the best damage possible. Now under the basic premise of this argument, I understand the sentiment that some combat styles have gotten a little bit ridiculous with the sheer number of switches to where it almost feels like there is one swap for every ability that you're supposed to do. For any Formula 1 fans out there, you could probably think back to either the 70s or the 80s, maybe even into the late 90s, where it was very much uh, just drive the car, there aren't really any driver assists, and a lot of the things helping the car go faster were down to the design of the vehicle and not so much computer aids or switching engine maps or anything like that. Whereas if you look at a modern Formula 1 car, there are about 17,000 different buttons on the steering wheel, and it looks like the driver is trying to play an actual video game while driving a race car. And in some specific situations, such as with Melee using Whip and Helm, I can understand this sentiment completely, and it feels rather ridiculous having to swap between a Tier 92 that is technically best in slot because of its effect, and the Tier 95 main hand for Hurricane and Destroy. And while yes, it is technically skill expression, it feels more repetitive than anything, and we could probably use some changes in those scenarios to bring in more unique ways of skill expression rather than just swapping one weapon for one ability. Now, I am not the most creative person by any means. I've never really had too many good solutions for this on how to make switches feel more unique, but typically looking into things like synergy between weapons and items usually is a good starting point. For example, using ECB spec with range is a nice way to use damage and skill expression because you are risking your AP. HP in order to get out extra damage, but you have to be careful of when you use it, and it synergizes well with the other weapon. It may not be the perfect example because ECB spec is main hand locked, however we've been able to get around that relatively well with the use of EOF, however I'm not going to go down that entire rabbit hole. Now where I think the argument here gets a little bit ridiculous is for people who just want to equip one weapon and have that be the best source of damage possible. And we've already kind of seen that with FSOA, being that it is single-handedly brought magic from being one of the worst damaging combat styles to top-of-the-line premier DPS in one foul swoop. And I don't think that any weapon in this game should hold the power to have the best damage. RuneScape 3 really isn't based off of having one weapon for each type of boss or monster. We don't really focus too much on, you know, very specific weaknesses and exploiting those to get better times or better damage. We don't really care if a weapon is used using slash or crush or arrows or bolts or anything like that. So typically the focus is on either if it's a dual wield or a two hand and the tier of the weapon and special attack that it brings to the table. But then that begs the question, what actually has been done about Switchscape so far? Well, relatively recently, Greater Sonic Wave came out and it shares cooldown with Greater Concentrated Blast, basically forcing you to pick one or the other rather than switching between the two of them. Also, when Zamorok released, we had enchantments for the three rings from Rex Matriarchs, as well as the tier 90 gloves that are upgraded from 
are Glacor, and they have this charging effect built in, where if you equip them instantly, you get the baseline buff of the specific item, but if you wait 9 seconds, then you get additional effects. Now, the charging aspect is to reduce, you know, instant switch scape. However, I don't think it is a good long-term solution, as forcing people to pick and choose what equipment they're wearing and sacrificing potential other effects, it doesn't feel good as far as equipment is concerned. And when it comes to picking and choosing between different abilities, I think this is a little bit more egregious, as we should be able to get abilities that synergize well with each other rather than forcing us to choose either two-hand or do wield. Now, Greater Sonic Wave is kind of its own thing, and I don't really want to get into it as I've not really experimented with it too much, I haven't cared too much about it so far, and it has caused quite the show on different social media platforms, so I might make a video on it later on. But suffice to say, the current changes that have been made in recent updates to try and mitigate Switchscape honestly is just not the best way to go about it. I don't agree with the concept of putting hard caps or time locks on certain pieces of gear. I think they should come out into the game originally with a good effect or stat that allows it to synergize with other pieces of equipment or abilities or weapons, you know, it has to synergize with something. Or it could just be a flat out upgrade. And a flat out upgrade doesn't mean it has to be the most broken thing to ever show up in game, but a nice update or a nice upgrade always feels good. Now let's take a look at the other side of the argument, where people will say that in order to do the best damage in game or just do good damage in game, you should be rewarded for putting in effort. And under the basic principle, I very much agree with this sentiment. As stated before, I don't exactly think one weapon should hold all of the power to do all of the best damage in game. I think that's a little bit ridiculous. And I very much enjoy a good risk to reward ratio for doing extra damage. A recent example of this is the vestments armor itself for melee. I really enjoy the glass cannon setup it offers, where yes, you're basically wearing paper mache armor, however the damage it can dish out with its effects is very much noticeable, compared to using something like Trim Masterwork for example. The freedom with adrenaline that it offers makes getting out rotations a lot nicer, and incorporating things such as Blade Meteor in a hybrid rotation, or just doing Meteor with a Greco swap before you hit that Berserk button, it allows for freeform damage to show up and improv rotations to show up based on the crits, and it's something I very much enjoy. I like having a combat system with a bit of improv in it based on more grounded principles, or broad principles I should say, rather than just pressing the same buttons over and over again for the best damage possible. Much earlier in different areas, and RuneScape, this was very much the case, because things were a lot simpler back then, we simply didn't have as much game knowledge. And our rotations were pretty much always the same no matter what, and memorization was more of a core to doing good damage, compared to now with more improv-based rotations. Now where I think this goes a little bit off the walls, as stated previously, is with items like Jaws of the Abyss or the Whip, although now that I think about it in concept, I don't necessarily disagree with them. I think they would be better suited as a type of enchantment or some type of add-on to already existing gear, but things like Gloves of the Passage being used for bleeds, it's only useful for one ability which is Havoc and then you go back to other gloves, and trying to implement the charging effect to limit this usage just kind of proves the point more of it needs to be reworked into something else in order for it to be able to give good damage in conjunction with the spear rather than just be a one-trick pony for for an ability. Now I do like the basic premise of Havoc and Gloves of Passage boosting the bleed damage. I think it provides a good synergy with the Trim Masterwork Spear and the three bleeds respectively, and if that was one of the only extra switches being used, I'm not too fussed about that. However, when you add too many of these types of switches, I think that's when it gets a little bit out of hand. Now Melee specifically is probably going to need an entire overhaul to really shape up the combat style, but that's a topic for another video. 
video. Now with the other two combat styles, I don't really have any issues with the current level of switchscape required to do the best damage possible with them. Magic has a staff, a dual wield option, uh, sometimes you can bring Inquisitor depending on the boss you're doing, although I think the only two relevant bosses people use this at are AOD and Solak. And if you're in an elite dungeon, a Karoming swap might show up. There aren't really any benefits for swapping to Karapak wrist wraps, and so I don't really see people doing that ever. People choose between Reaver's Ring or Channeler's Ring based on the accuracy at a given boss and not so much their actual effects. And so as far as Magic Switchscape is concerned, I think it's at a very good level and it could honestly even use a little bit more. You do have two EOFs with Magic, however ABS is the one you're going to be using 99% of the time and you might swap to G-Staff maybe two or three times a minute, although it does depend on where you're at. You might be using Auto G-Staff a bit more if you're doing a bunch a mob clearing, say an elite dungeon for example, but overall there really isn't too much going on with magic. Now range does have quite a bit of switches, although range is kind of suffering from the same problem of a lot of things are main hand locked, such as bow of the last guardian, you have to use the bow in order to get the effects, and you can't build up stacks or anything else with a dual wield or a different bow equipped. ECB is a main hand locked thing, and that is somewhat mitigated by putting inside of an EOF and being able to swap either EOFs or offhand switches, but it is suffering as a combat style basically forcing you to either choose bolts or arrows based on the current meta and what items are currently in game, and being that Bow of the Last Guardian is the only T95, and arrows in game are very strong compared to the offers with bolts. You're basically either forced to pick dual wield or bow camping, and bow camping is going to win 99% of the time. The only use case where this does not fully occur is with a poison build, being that you can build up big stacks with a bow and then swap over to crossbows and use emerald but criminal bolts, and those two actually synergize pretty well, and I do think that is a good example to pull from when designing future gear and whatnot for the range combat style. However, at this point, range is starting to seem like it's catching up with melee in terms of number of switches. You have three EOFs, you have two blight bounds with an offhand Karoming, you have your Bow of the Last Guardian. Now, most rangers at this point aren't really bringing crossbow swaps, but the number of switches is definitely there if you're trying to do a full complement setup. So in conclusion, what are my overall thoughts on Switchscape? I very much enjoy Switchscape as a form of skill expression and as part of an input versus reward system, being that the more inputs you do, usually you're going to be rewarded with doing more damage. However, just like anything in life, moderation is usually the key, where things need to be considered about what types of switches they're being used and how they're implemented to kind of combat just stacking up a bunch of switches at once. And in the current meta, I've been pretty happy with where the amount of switchscape is, being that I very much enjoy basically going on hybrid setups at as many places as possible, because hybrid is going to bring quite the amount of benefit in terms of damage, because you're putting in more effort, and I find it very much enjoyable. However, if someone doesn't want to hybrid, they don't have to, as the combat styles are pretty competent in terms of damage by themselves, albeit some of them have a bit more switching to do than others, and I think a lot of the hatred towards switching comes from a place of more so instant gratification mindsets, rather than actually working through the issue and thinking about it objectively, and realizing that, yeah, RuneScape is probably not going to be as fast-paced as some shooter games where you can basically just jump in and start owning if you have some good skill sets. As I'm sure y'all are well aware, RuneScape is quite the grind of a game, and I very much have enjoyed building up skill sets over the years to then get to the top levels of PVM, and I have found this entire process very much enjoyable, and will keep on enjoying it as far as I can see into the future. So hopefully this video was helpful helpful. And the reason I just wanted to make this video was to kind of look at both sides, understand the sentiment of where both sides of the argument are coming from, kind of give my thoughts on the whole issue, and just put it out into the ether. Slowly but surely, I'm kind of taking the old man yelling at clouds philosophy to RuneScape, and I understand my voice might not have the biggest impact out here, but hey, I'm putting my two cents out there for those to listen to. And if you disagree with something I said, feel free to leave it in the comments below. However, just keep it civil. And anyways, before before I ramble on for another five minutes about something, let's go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies 
gentlemen. And I did not forget about you weapon switches. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for the next video. Peace.